ونادوا أصحاب الجنة أنسلام عليكم لم يدخلوها وهم يطمعون الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين بعثه الله شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه والسراج المنير Our honorable brothers they picked the topic of red pill and also feminism, two sides of the same coin. Before we indulge in these two movements, brothers and sisters, I want to, inshallah ta'ala, ask you all a very important pressing question. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create both me and you? Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create me as a man to degrade women? from me to subjugate her to oppression and always push her around, right? Bully the opposite gender that also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. My sister, did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create you for the sole purpose of competing with men, the opposite gender? Is that the reason as to why Allah azza wa jal brought us all into existence? This is a question to really think about, brothers and sisters. Right? What is my reason of existence? This is a question that many really don't want to think about. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us. Right? Do you think that you were created without a purpose? All of these different distractions out there, all of these things that busy us away from taking a moment out to think why does everything exist and where am I heading? Sometimes when we stand outside of the city center, you guys know what city center is, right? I don't know, maybe you guys have something else in Dutch. City center where the malls are and you know where everyone, all the shayateen come to. Huh? <laughs> طيب. Sometimes I stand there and I just ask questions to a lot of the non-Muslims and hoping to really stimulate their minds. Thought-provoking questions to really make that person think and wonder, why am I here? Did Allah Azza wa just create me so that I could wake up in the morning, go to work, come back, watch a couple of episodes on Netflix, Go to sleep. I do that four days a week. And then on Friday night, I go out to club. I drink myself to sleep, catch an Uber home. And then Saturday, the exact same thing. Sunday, maybe likewise. Or maybe a lot of you guys are getting ready for university. Getting ready for work. And then the same box life. The same routine. Every single week, brothers and sisters. Is that why... I have been brought into existence. This is a very important question that I want every single individual to think about when they go to sleep tonight. Right? To really question your existence. Right? Coming to the topic of why someone may turn to feminism. Before I mention that, brothers and sisters, you know the Arabs, they have a saying. It's called Tawdih al wadihat min al Mushkilat. Trying to explain that which is so obvious can sometimes be a bit of a problem. Do you guys agree with that? Is it dark outside or is there light? Can everyone see the outside world? Outside of this lecture hall? Is it nighttime or is it daytime? Huh? Can you now explain to me that it's actually daytime? If I ask you for proof as to how it is daytime now, are you able to prove that to me? Explain to me. You're telling me it's daytime? No, I need something more for you to convince me that it's daytime. 
من المشكلات. Trying to explain that which is so obvious, you don't need an evidence at times, guys. It's just obvious. Right? What is the point that I'm trying to get at, my brothers and my sisters? The status of a woman in al Islam is so clear as daylight that it really does not require an elaboration. It really doesn't require an in depth explanation. It is so clear. Sometimes, wallahi, it astonishes me, right? When I engage in conversation with both brothers and sisters, me trying to convince them that Islam does not oppress, Islam does not oppress women. This is the kind of rhetoric that is pushed around, sah? Islam is so oppressive towards women, right? It subjugates her, it subordinates her, it marginalizes her, and all of these different claims that we hear. When in reality, it is so clear in al Islam the status of a woman. Let me, inshallah ta'ala, mention a couple of things that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what Allah Jalla fi ula mentioned to us with regards to a woman. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, and every time I come across this hadith, it really touches me, brothers and sisters. And that is because I have sisters and I have daughters. And Abu al Banat, I'm the father of daughters. Allah Azza wa blessed me with these daughters, which comes with a huge responsibility, right? He, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَنْ كَانَ لَهُ أُخْتَانْ أَوْ ابْنَتَانْ He who has two sisters. And he also has, I shouldn't say also has, or he has two daughters, right? فأحسن, فَأَحْسَنَ إِلَيْهِمَا مَا صَاحِبَتَاهِ كُنْتُ أَنَا وَهُوَ كَهَاتَيْنِ Here the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, whoever has two sisters, or has two daughters, and he treats them with kindness, right, as long as they are alive. Kuntu ana wa huwa kahatin. Me and him will be like this. The messenger, may peace and blessings be upon him, mentioned like this, look. Simply because he treats them with kindness. Oppression, huh? Islam is so barbaric, so oppressive, right? It pushes the woman around. It subjugates her. Sahih. That's just one hadith, my brothers and my sisters. Another hadith, we are told three. Not just two, but three. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, while he's on his deathbed, guys, on his deathbed. If you are on your deathbed, my beloved brothers and sisters, what are you going to be talking about? You're going to be maybe... Discuss that which is most important to you, right? What you want written down on your will. Maybe some things that you forgot that you want to now emphasize and highlight so that the rights of maybe your children are not taken away. Sahih. That money is there. That money is here. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. That which is most important to you is what you are going to be maybe mentioning, right? With the last few words that you still have the ability to utter. Agreed? Out of all the things that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam could have mentioned, ماذا قال الصلاة الصلاة وما ملكت أيمانكم The prayer, the prayer. The prayer, the prayer. Of course, the rights that Allah has over you. Establishing the Salah and also the responsibility that has been placed on your shoulders with those women that come under you, right? Fulfilling that responsibility in a manner that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, treating them with kindness. From the last things that he uttered was the rights that Allah has over you with regards to the prayer. And likewise, these women that you are responsible of, treat them with kindness, treat them nicely, treat them responsibly. Doesn't end there, my brothers and my sisters. Hajjatul Wada'. You guys heard of the farewell Hajj? 
Does anyone know how many Muslims attended this farewell Hajj? The last pilgrimage, for those who don't know. Hajj we do once in our lifetime. That's a responsibility, right? an obligation upon every Muslim. The last Hajj, the last pilgrimage. 120,000 attended my brothers and my sisters. Out of all the things again that he could mention, he said, Treat the women with kindness. Treat them well. Right? And the evidences, my brothers and my sisters, are many. As to how the Messenger really went out his way to ensure that his companions don't treat their wives and their women folk in a manner that is unjust, in a manner that is oppressive. Have you guys heard of inheritance? Inheritance that is distributed after one departs from this world. He leaves behind money. Sometimes what happens is, my brothers and my sisters, you come across certain texts in the Quran which may come across oppressive. And that is because of the lens that we look through. You know the lens that we look through? One has been convinced that everything needs to be equal. And there's no third way about it. It has to be done through the lens of equal rights. Everything has to be equal. Anything other than that is considered oppressive and unjust. So this is the lens that one may look through. Then comes, the third, comes across certain passages of the Quran right which doesn't fit this narrative for example now right the ratio of 2 to 1 when it comes to the daughters and the sons that one leaves behind agreed isn't this what allah mentioned is this something that is doubted not at all when a father passes away and he has daughters and also sons in the quran it states right that it should be distributed amongst his sons and daughters with a ratio of two to one. This individual now, who's maybe a feminist, or someone who's uneducated, comes and says, ah, oppression. Why are the daughters being oppressed? Right? Why is it not being distributed equally? And statements such as, this is unfair, this is unjust, who uttered these statements, huh? Who's the one that uttered these statements in the Quran? None other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He who said about himself, وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not oppress anyone. And now you are saying that this is oppressive. This is unjust. This, my brothers and my sisters, is so dangerous. Right? It is so dangerous. It is more worse at times when you think about it. Some of these statements that we utter, than some of these major sins that people utter. Or major sins that one may engage in. And that is because, في ذات الله, with regards to Allah, you are saying that He is oppressive. This is borderline kufr, disbelief. You are flirting now with disbelief, my brothers and my sisters. This is the result of certain things that inshallah ta'ala I'm going to elaborate on in a moment. But before I do that, let me finish off this point. Right? When it comes to the inheritance, did you know, my brothers and my sisters, that there are scenarios where a woman, she is entitled to the same amount as the man. It's not just a ratio of two to one. That's the second scenario. The first scenario is where he ends up getting more than the woman. Second scenario is that they get equal. The third scenario is, my brothers and my sisters, that the woman, right, actually gets more than the man. There are scenarios like that. This issue of inheritance, the reason why I'm emphasizing on it, it is a big reason for concern amongst that group of people. Are you guys with me? And there are scenarios, and this is now what? The fourth case, or the fourth situation. 
where a woman inherits and the man gets nothing. What does this show you and what is the point that I'm trying to make, my brothers and my sisters? With a little bit of guidance, with a little bit of research, things start becoming apparent. Things start unfolding in a way that once upon a time we thought, subhanAllah, it is almost impossible for this to be. Now let me ask you, my brothers and my sisters, why is it that we have individuals turning towards some of these modern day movements, these modern day ideologies. Can anyone tell me? Did anyone come to Germany yesterday? Huh? Nijmegen. For those who don't know, we have a private joke with the Nijmegen people. Huh? Put your hand up if you came yesterday. MashaAllah, maybe 10, 12, 13 people. Like, we really enjoyed ourselves yesterday. Sah. What are some of the reasons as to why an individual may actually turn to some of these modern day movements? Ah. Tfadal. Oh no, don't say it then. And the rest. Huh? Sorry? Ignorance. Good. That may well be the root cause for why we see an individual deviating away from his natural disposition. Hiya. Anything else? Lack of knowledge, which is of course the opposite of what he mentioned. Due to ignorance, right? There is a lack of knowledge. Sahih. It's almost the same as what he said. Right? It's almost the same. And then the opposite of that is knowledge. This is what I meant. Now, Sakala khair. That was the right answer. Uh, anything else? Following whims and desires. Huh? What else? Not lowering the gaze. Sakala <laughs> khair. Huh? A sense of belonging. Yes. Sahih. Good. Anything else? Huh. Social pressure. I'm going to mention these three points, inshallah ta'ala. And perhaps it will put things into perspective for us. Number one, ignorance. Right? Lack of knowledge. I will guarantee you that there are People in the crowd today, after I went through some of these points pertaining to what a woman is entitled to and how Al Islam, how Al Islam emphasized the importance of a woman in our religion. And I'm sure all of you guys have memorized the hadith of when the Messenger was asked, Who is most deserving of my kind treatment? How many times did he say the mother? He said three times, but equal rights though, right? He mentioned the mother three times, but then the miskeen daddy, huh? He was only mentioned once. Where's the equal rights? The mother was mentioned thrice, guys. The dad only once. Right? The emphasis that Al Islam gives to a woman's position in society. Sahih. However, the narrative that we see in the media is very, very different. With a little bit of knowledge, we were able now to establish that. So this whole concept of a woman being oppressed in Islam, where did this come from? Only you can tell me. Right? Just maybe expanding on this point here, when we mention ignorance and a lack of knowledge, also not double-checking information. We hear something, and then we jump on it straight away, we embrace these sentiments without checking the information. What does Islam teach us, my brothers and my sisters? Ya ayyuhal ladheena amnu inja'akum. فَاسِقٌ بِنَبَيْنْ فَتَبَيَّنُوا And another riwayah فَتَثَبَّتُوا Oh, you believe if a fasiq, if a transgressor, someone who opposes Allah's commandments comes to you with information, then double check it. Agreed? That's just common sense at times. Are you brothers and sisters with me? You guys with me, right? You know when I go around to the different universities, I always come across someone who is ready maybe to jump ship. Alhamdulillah, the majority of the Muslims are doing great. However, there's always that one person, and I just finished 27 universities around the UK. 27 universities. Alhamdulillah. Right? All of those programs went ahead, even though some of these blue-head feminists, they tried to shut down my programs, and the colorful team as well. 
But they failed miserably. They failed. I forgot to mention at the beginning, right, how I'm absolutely, uh, you know, over the moon that you brothers were able to put this program together. Right? Even though there are enemies. Laylan wa naharan, sabahan wa masaan. They're always trying to shut down these programs. Even though I'm pretty conservative and traditional. Maybe even controversial at times. And alhamdulillah, the program still went ahead. Anyways, going back to the point that I was making. Let me ask you guys a question. Anyone here doing engineering? Anyone here studying technology? I think that's everyone in the university, right? Huh? Uh, Bashar, what are you studying? Industrial Sorry? Industrial engineering. Industrial engineering. Let me ask you a question. What year are you in? Third. Third year. You're about to graduate. Yes. Sometimes people ask you about your expertise, right? That which you're about to become qualified in. And you might not necessarily know the answer. Do you know every single aspect about what you're studying? Every single thing? No. Are you an alim? A scholar in this field? Taib. If someone now asks you a question and you didn't have the answer, would you think about leaving your course? Would anyone in their right mind do that? Put your hand up if you're studying maths. Mathematician. So hey, third year? Third year, right? There are questions that you aren't able to answer. Is that correct? Would you think about just leaving your course? Why not? But you don't know. Huh? What happens if you don't know? You do some research. You look into it. Now my brothers and my sisters, why is it that when someone now gives you certain concepts of these modern day ideologies and movements, it shakes your assessiat. It shakes the foundation that you had before you came to university. Right? Why is it that you are shaken to the core? Why is it that one now begins to contemplate leaving the religion of Islam, leaving their morals and their values, when in reality you did not have the tools to equip yourself Right? You didn't have the tools now to protect yourself from some of these doubts that are being thrown your direction. How does that make sense? Are you brother and sister with me? Especially in this kind of environment, which is the breeding ground for kufr, shirk, liberalism, secularism, right? Feminism likewise, and of course the rainbow team, sahih. Right? And I just want to make it very, very clear, I am not uh, a violent preacher. I don't have my own views and opinions. I'm just here to quote and to spread peace. Are you brothers and sisters with me? Right? I'm just quoting. But this is a fact, sahih. Everyone is pushing whatever they believe and whatever they stand for. And at times, you are overwhelmed with some of these movements. And it makes you contemplate leaving what you've always stood for. But why though? Why would you do that? You don't have the knowledge. Right? To equip yourself when repelling these doubts that are coming your way. Does that make sense, my brothers and my sisters? Right? So that's the first point. The second reason as to why one may turn towards feminism, and this one is very, very important, and I'm sure our sisters are going to be cheering in the women's section. Right? It is due to oppressive men who do not represent Islamic values. Right? You got someone who might even use the religion of Islam to justify his actions as to why he's maybe treating a woman in a certain manner. Quotes a hadith, mashallah, very good at quoting verses and quoting a hadith. But in reality, it has been taken out of context. This miskina, and again, if you look at the root problem, which was ignorance, she doesn't know, right? How a woman is supposedly uh, treated in light of Islam, right? All she sees is this man treating her like this. He might even have a beard and he's quoting all these verses and she thinks that this is what Al-Islam propagates. Right? It is ignorance on her side and it's also what ignorance on his side. Agreed, my brothers and my sisters. 
How many a time has a sister sent me an email after a program that I delivered saying, Wallahi, all this time, I thought what my husband was telling me was Al-Islam. He's been oppressing me. He's taken all of these rights. He tells me to contribute to half the expenses of the house. Sahih? I don't know, maybe you guys, when you go to the marriage meeting, you are negotiating how much he needs to put on the table. 50-50. Where did this whole 50-50 come from? Oh, equal rights though, right? But this is not an Islamic concept. This is not, right, a duty of the woman. Al-Islam states that she is treated like a queen, even if she is a multi-billionaire. Did you know, my friend, that you also have to clothe her bil ma'roof? As long as it's in line with customs, you have to what? Still clothe her, even if she has her own money. This is al-Islam, right? There's no equal rights. In this scenario, my brothers and my sisters, sometimes when I tell non-Muslims this, they become absolutely shocked. They're blown away. I think... I might want to become a Muslim as well, right? This lady is saying this. He has to clothe her. He has to put a roof over her head. Bil ma'roof, of course, right? He has to put food on the table. She doesn't have to take a single penny out of her bank account to contribute to the monthly expenses and bills. If she wants to help out, then great. But are you allowed to now enforce it upon her? Is that now an obligation upon her? Abad la. So I don't know what you guys are cooking huh? in the marriage meeting, brothers. Are you guys with me? This is very, very important. The oppression of men. Especially, I say to you, oh brother, oh father, if a revert now comes into the equation, she's become a Muslim. And now she's being treated oppressively. The way you treat her could well be the reason why she ends up leaving the fold of Islam. Be extra careful. Are you brothers and sisters with me? Number three. Glorifying the progressive white American non-Muslim woman. By the way, there's nothing wrong with white people. Just in case we have... What's that channel called again? Huh? Bonus. Huh? <laughs> Just in case someone here that works for that channel was looking to cut out what I'm saying, looking to taking it out of context. But I think everyone understands where I'm coming from, right? We look at America as progressives. People who are doing great in society. She's like this, then I must be like this as well. Today, inshallah ta'ala, I will give you guys some statistics about the British lady. The British lady that some of us Muslims might be glorifying and venerating and looking up to what they, what they deep inside really badly want. Now that we're done with all of that, my brothers and my sisters, let's speak a little bit about feminism. I'm coming to the red pill, guys. Huh? I'm coming to you guys. Let's speak a little bit about how feminism came about. You had first wave feminism. And then he moved into what second wave feminism. The first wave feminists, my brothers and my sisters, they had some reasonable demands. Such as, we want education. Is there anything wrong with that? Is there anything wrong with that? Does Al-Islam hold a woman back from becoming educated? Huh. Is a woman allowed to study? Of course, without a shadow of a doubt, she is. Who was the most knowledgeable female companion? Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. She was also knowledgeable about something else. Does anyone know? It is one of the sciences that is studied here in university. Does anyone know? Come on, guys. Huh? She said business. It was actually Khadija, the first wife of Prophet Muhammad. May peace and blessings be upon him. Something that, uh, medicine. medicine, good. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she was very well versed when it came to medicine. Something that a lot of us here didn't know today. How did she learn? 
When the Messenger of Allah, may peace and blessings be, uh, be upon him, became very ill, doctors would, uh, would come to the Messenger of Allah to treat him. And she would be listening to how they were treating him, right? She picked up a lot of knowledge just listening to these doctors that were treating her beloved husband, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa Did the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa say to her, listen, no, education is not for you women. Stay far away. Just go and memorize and revise the ahadith that I gave you. All of these narrations that I huh, conveyed to you, only go and stick with that. Is that what he told her? لا. She was educated Islam is not against a woman's education So they had some reasonable demands These first wave feminists Right And then you have what? Second wave feminists Which emerged In the 1960s They began to protest for equal rights Women before the 1960s My brothers and my sisters were known as housewives and mothers. Today, when you hear the term housewife or being a mother, right, you begin to see agitation. Sahih? It makes one feel extremely uncomfortable. And that is simply because society, society has downplayed the importance of being a housewife and a mother. Is that it? Is that what you just want me to be? Just a mother? Just a housewife? This is the kind of reaction we get, right? However, up until 1960s, brothers and sisters, this was the norm. They were traditional mothers and likewise housewives. Someone may say today, oh, but that was back in the day. We are now very progressive. This is modern day women. This is how we should be. Things have changed and so on and so forth. MashaAllah, up until 1960s, right? The world was misguided. They were in darkness. They didn't know how to live life, right? Even though now when you look at different studies and statistics, marriages back in the day, they lasted a lot longer than how long it lasts today. Do you guys agree? Huh? This is misogyny, guys, huh? Be very careful. So this aggravated many women and made them feel the need to reform the stereotype. Today I'm going to be quoting Simone de Beauvoir. Do you guys know who Simone de Beauvoir is? Anyone here studying modern day movements, huh? Huh? She's from France, mashallah. This brother is well versed. What about the rest of you guys? You guys don't know Simone de Beauvoir? Do you guys know Betty Friedan? Who's Betty Friedan? Yeah, it's good that you guys came today Inshallah <laughs> So they began to use the media Right To reform this stereotype Naomi Chomsky She once said He who controls the media Controls the mind The media is a very powerful tool This is why I feel very proud When we have media stations such as One minute for Allah I tried to say that in Dutch Right? Muslims that have platforms where they're able to have an influence on the narrative that is being pushed. It makes us happy. Right? Because unfortunately, these media platforms, they really go out their way to change and shape one's mindset. Right? It influences the effects, the impacts. So, in a nutshell, my brothers and my sisters, right? Feminism is stands on two pillars. Have you guys heard of that book called Usul al-Thalatha? Which means the three fundamentals or the three foundations. We're not studying Usul al-Thalatha now. We are studying Aslani Aziman. Just as you have three Usul, here the feminists they have two Asls. Two main foundations that feminism stands on. What is the first one? Right, Calling for the structure of society to be changed. So that men and women can be equal. That's number one. Number two, my brothers and my sisters, showing opposition to the traditional, right, roles that both men and women have had throughout history. 
These are two main pillars. You know, brothers always ask, what are some of the red flags that I should look out for in a marriage meeting? Right? And sometimes sisters say, how can we protect ourselves from being influenced by feminists? Because of the environment that we are in, sometimes subconsciously these sentiments, they creep in. And we begin to utter certain statements that go against the sharia. And we don't want that. I had sisters come up to me a couple of weeks ago when I delivered a program in West London. Alhamdulillah, over 500 sisters packed out the wedding hall, right? And then they were asking these questions, right? They wanted to be far away and distant from some of these sentiments. I'm going to quickly, inshallah ta'ala, read out some of these sentiments, which only elaborates on these two main pillars. Brothers, listen up. Huh? Especially if you are courting and vetting. Very, very quickly, guys. Denying that there are natural differences between men and women. Huh? Have men and women been created the exact same way? Even Simone de Beauvoir states that. Huh? The founding mother of feminism. We will come unto this lady, inshallah ta'ala. Wanting the structure of society to be changed so that men and women can be the same. Attacking and showing hostility towards the traditional role of the female. Promotes 50-50 male slash female quotas for all elected and appointed offices and occupations. Ignores marriage and is hostile towards the family unit. I heard the brothers are roasting out here. Huh? They are desperately trying to get married. And in the UK is the opposite. I think all of you guys need to take a visit to the UK. You might find a sister who wants to get married. Allahu alam. I don't know if it's true, sisters. But some brothers, maybe they're wrong. Huh? And perhaps they're wrong. Inshallah ta'ala, after this lecture, it will be a different situation. Right? That it is the sisters here that are not looking for marriage. It's just the brothers that are running around. Huh? Looking, getting rejected. Miskeen. Huh? He's in a difficult situation. Right? Over there in the UK is the guy. No, wallahi, I'm not sure. This and that. And the sisters are ready. Right? May Allah help you guys. Huh? Offers no protection to housewives or full-time mothers. Discourages the choice to care for one's own children. Right? Demands recognition of sexual and reproductive rights, including the acceptance of homosexual lifestyles and the right to abortion on demand. Targets, and I put this in quotation marks, fundamentalists. These are the jamming tactics that are used when silencing someone who is maybe propagating a narrative that goes against that which they are trying to make mainstream. So he's met with all of these labels, or he's a bigot. He's a fundamentalist, right? He's this and he's that in order to silence him. Yesterday we spoke about the three steps that are used in order to convert you to whatever is being propagated. Does anyone remember what was the first one? Huh? The first one was desensitize. What does desensitization mean? These three steps, my brothers and my sisters, is really going to help you have a very good idea if, with what is happening around us. What is this tactic that is used of desensitization? If I sit here, my brothers and my sisters, for the next seven days and I keep banging on about the same thing, if you don't agree with me on day one, by the seventh day, you're at least going to be understanding and sympathetic towards what I keep on feeding you. And that is because I'm banging on about it all the time. This is why you see certain things that are being rubbed on our faces and shoved down our throats once upon a time. When the colors were getting huh, pretty widespread, everyone was like, oh, the Mahdi is near. The Dajjal is coming. Everyone was scared. How about now, guys? Oh, it's just another thing, sah? 
just another thing or another issue that we have to deal with. Sahih? We've become desensitized to it. What is the second uh, method that is used? Jam. Not the jam that you eat. Huh? These jamming tactics of labeling anyone who goes against that narrative that is being propagated with all of these labels. Oh, he's misogynistic. If I say that it's good for a woman to be housewife, I might be labeled as a misogynist. Limada. All of these negative labels are thrown around. He's a bigot. He's anti this, he's anti that. Are your brothers and sisters with me? And then my brothers and my sisters convert. When you are silenced, you are shoved into that corner and you've just, right, accepted uh, all of these things that have been mentioned to you all of these years. You'll eventually accept, yeah, that's right. Your brothers and sisters with me. And this is the result of silence. Being silent, right, and shying away from propagating the truth. This is why now you have the Red Pill movement, which is a knee-jerk reaction to the feminist movement, right, that has taken away the masculinity of many. Agreed, my brothers and my sisters? Where he becomes, yes, don't worry, honey. Everything you want to do, it's fine. Huh? Don't worry, you go to work, I'll stay at home. I'll breastfeed the child. Huh? Ila had al had. She's now wearing the trousers in the house. And any time he objects or contests, ah, oh, right? It's not even equal rights anymore, guys. It's gone past that stage. So the Red Pill movement is a knee-jerk reaction to this feminist movement. Right? Because they have felt oppressed all of these years. And this is the reality, my brothers and my sisters, with every single movement that you see emerging or unfolding. Ibn al-Qayyim, he said, إِذَا ضَعُفَتِ السُنَّةِ قَوِيتَ الْبِدْعَةِ Take this as a principle. When the sunnah becomes weak, what is the opposite of the sunnah? Innovation, bid'ah. The bid'ah will become strong. This is a principle that we can even apply here. When the haqq, right, Islamic morals and values are not being propagated, are not being established, don't be surprised that falsehood and deviation now ends up taking a stronghold on society. And the moment you object, oh, people are looking at you as someone who's weird, who's out of touch with reality. Brother, we are in 2023. What are you talking about? And that is because the haq diminished. The truth is no longer spoken about. Are you brother and sister with me? Right? Let me ask you guys a question. National anthem. You guys have national anthem, eh? Imagine now someone walked into the masjid and started singing a national anthem. Would you guys have an issue with that? Imagine that happened in the UK and people are saying, what's the issue? What's the problem? Imagine that. Brothers were getting upset. How can the masjid do this? How can that imam be standing there? Huh? You know how you'd be with khushu' in the salah standing there? That's how he's standing there. Completely desensitized. And others say, Akhi, it's just not, what's, the, what's the big deal, Akhi? What's the big deal? This is the result of what? Basic morals and values, normative Islam, right? Has been targeted. And that which may have been from the musallamat, the things that are accepted, right? Without hesitation, all of a sudden now is being questioned. And then we also have here, blames the problems of women on make, power, control, and men. We are like this because of you. Let me read out, inshallah, ta'ala, this is my favorite part of the lecture, Simone de Beauvoir, right? She has a book called The Second Sex, right? Part one, chapter one. This is the lady, my brothers and my sisters, who's calling to all of these sentiments that I just mentioned, right? She's calling to all of these sentiments that I just mentioned. 
She declares, right, the following. That a woman, she's speaking about a woman, her grasp of the world is thus more limited. Imagine if Abu Taymiyyah said that. Huh? Wouldn't I be labelled as a misogynist? But like I said, Abu Taymiyyah doesn't have his own views. Right? And he doesn't express his own opinions. He just quotes. Look what she says also, right? She has less firmness and perseverance in projects that she is also less able to carry out. This means that her individual life is not as rich as a man's one. This is me reading, right? As De Beauvoir is saying that women are intrinsically more emotionally unstable and weak-willed than a man. This is in essence what she's exactly saying. Right? Considering that she famously once wrote, one is not born but rather becomes a woman, which I take to mean that she supports the idea of behavior being entirely the result of social construction. Right? Let me read out something else, my brothers and my sisters. Huh? This will may well leave you flabbergasted and shocked. Simone de Beauvoir, she was once preparing her new independent home in Paris. Someone said, mashallah. Huh? <laughs> and waiting for the return of Satar from Paris. Who is Satar? Huh? Her husband. Allahu Akbar. Akhi, come sit in the close to us, Akhi. Ta'al, Akhi, ta'al. No, come, come, Akhi. We have... Do we not have a chair for the brother? I think he deserves to sit. Huh? Yeah, come sit here, Akhi. Come sit here, please, please. Are you sure? No, please, we want you here, Akhi. I was going to say, give him a round of applause, but don't. That's for women. Huh? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi said, Tasfihu lil nisa. Clapping is for women. Am I fabricating anything that I'm saying, Habibi? Where did you get all this information from? He said, from high school. Who taught you it? Your French teacher. Huh? We're studying, right, in school. So this is not just Abu Taymiyyah coming with his own conservative traditional views. Huh? Being so, uh, how can I put this, biased in what he's propagating, right? Alhamdulillah, wa shahida shahidun in ahliha. Type of shit. She was waiting for the return of Satar from Paris, her husband. Before she was against the family unit. New furniture is brought, the walls were papered, and the new clothes have been purchased. Satter hated family life and persuaded her to write the book. Right? He called her a mere housewife. Allahu Akbar. This is the husband of the founding mother of feminism, Simone de Beauvoir. Look what she says. After he called her a mere housewife. I was furious with myself to have disappointed him in this way. Allahu Akbar. I was disappointed with myself. Right? She also mentioned, and tell me if I'm wrong, huh? This is the admission of a 54-year-old lady called Simone de Beauvoir. She says, Satar is a true superior. Huh? True superior. The moment this term superiority is mentioned, we might have an outcry. Huh? It's an unacceptable term. It's a misogynistic term. She says, I felt dominated by someone else intellectually. Satan lived up the man that I dreamed. I dreamed of this kind of man at the age of 15. I was simply not his class. I detest my own reflection if at least my thought had given birth to a hill, a rocket, but no, nothing has taken place. I am astonished to realize how thoroughly I have been cheated. Now, my brothers and my sisters, 
Would you believe that this is actually coming from the founding mother of feminism? Someone who contested and waged war against the family unit of having a husband, right? And having children, being a housewife, being a mother, and so on and so forth. Have you guys heard of the Daily Mail? You guys heard of the Daily Mail? It's one of the most disgusting uh, news outlets that are out there. So Islamophobic and biased. They have an article that I came across from 2013 May. And excuse me for wording this title, I was actually quoting this title which has been worded in this particular manner. It says, did the feminists burn their bras for nothing? Because this is actually what they've done, right? Majority of British women would pick being a housewife over having a career. And he said the following, women aged 25 plus in a relationship and full-time jobs they were polled. And these were the astonishing statistics. Right? For my sisters who want long-term careers, those who might think marriage is not something that is important, something that is maybe secondary, something that doesn't hold much value and worth. Please listen up to this. Right. 62% admitted they secretly wish to be a housewife. Again, this is not a butamia. I'm just quoting. 74% said they felt pressure from other women to be independent. 78% said they wouldn't mind being financially dependent on their husbands. 78%. My brothers and my sisters, what we need to realize and accept is that men and women have been created differently. You know the hard labor jobs that a man does, such as standing under the scorching heat, building these skyscrapers. Would anyone here as men encourage his wife now to go and take this kind of job? Or your daughters? Huh, why not, guys? But equal rights. Or for her now to work in the sewage. You guys know what a sewage is, right? To work in the sewage. Right? Or to do any of these other hard labor jobs, like mining. Mushkila. None of you guys would do it. And I'm sure a lot of our sisters... Huh? Wouldn't want jobs like that. But equal rights. I remember seeing some quotes where they were saying, where are all the feminists when it came to the whole Ukrainian and Russian war? By the way, I don't uh, condone Vladimir Putin. Huh? Or anything of violence or whatever have you. Like I said, I spread compassion and peace, guys. But now, what happened to equal rights? Where are all the feminists? Shouldn't they be campaigning that also women should be standing alongside these men now that are putting their bodies on the line? Allah created you differently. Right? As mentioned by Simone de Beauvoir, the misogynist. Right? I came across this, uh, this file it was called the United Nations Fourth World Conference on Women. Where well, some of the superpowers got together to discuss women-related issues. It was like in black and white, my brothers and my sisters, I was absolutely flabbergasted by some of the verdicts in there. Absolutely shocked, guys. Just to show you how much we are being cheated as a society. To cut a long story short, because I've been given an ultimatum, The French feminist called Simone de Beauvoir. And then you have the American feminist called Betty Friedan. She was also a feminist writer and activist. A leading figure in the women's movement in the United States. Her 1963 book, The Feminine Mystique, is often credited with sparking the second wave of American feminism in the 20th century. This is a big woman. Huh? 
Guys, I'm going to come to it. I know some of you guys are waiting for the red pill. We're going to come on to it. Huh? She was interviewing her and she asked Simone de Beauvoir, should women be given the choice to become housewives? What do you think the answer was? She says, no. We don't believe that any woman should have this choice. Why? She says, no woman should be authorized to stay at home to raise her children. Society should be totally different. Women should not have that choice precisely because if there was such choice, too many women will take that decision. Too many women... <laughs> Sorry, guys. Right? Too many women will end up taking that choice. They know. Right? David Rockefeller. You guys heard of David Rockefeller? By the way, just in case someone wants to say, oh, I'm making this up. Right? I'm, uh, what's the name that I have? Conspiracist. Right? I actually have a video. But I didn't want to release it on my YouTube channel because it has music in the background. Huh? David Rockefeller is part of a family, right? The Rockefeller family, which is an American industrial, political, and banking family that owns one of the world's largest fortunes. You know what he claimed? We started and funded the women's movement so that we could tax both sexes. That way, we could put women to work and take their children to control. You know what Malcolm X once said, my brothers and my sisters? Only a dumb person will allow his enemy to look after his children or to indoctrinate or teach his children. Right? Yeah, shit. Russell Bertrand. You know what he said? Not much can be done unless indoctrination begins before 10 years of age. Right? These children go to school, they get indoctrinated, and then they come home, right, questioning whether they should use this pronoun or that pronoun. Am I wrong to say that? We're dealing with this almost on a week to week basis. The parent gets angry. Why should he get angry? You're the one that took your child to these places, eh? Right? Or sometimes he says, I'll bring the sheikh. I think my child has a jinn. Right? My child has mess. I need you, O oh Sheikh, to read Quran on him. No, he doesn't have jinn. He's not possessed. Simply because he doesn't know, that's why now he's coming home asking you all of these questions. Right? And again, I'm just quoting. A shahid min al kalam, I know I said a lot. I know sister may probably ask me now, are you against a woman working? No, I'm not. However, if this is now going to be at the expense of your children being indoctrinated, right? Their aqidah, their belief, which is most precious to them, being ripped away from them, my brothers and my sisters, then are you okay with that? Or some nanny that's going to be looking after them for the majority of the day. Allahu a'lam what she's feeding them. Not physically, huh? the food, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what she is indoctrinating them with. Or they're spending hours on these gadgets. Guys, I'm going to need an extra five minutes. Yeah, please. These gadgets that they are sitting on. Today I mentioned in the khutbah, sometimes what happens is as parents, we hand over these gadgets and these iPads because we are busy. Right? Sitting in front of the TV or we are, right, Holding on to this iPad, we don't want anyone to disturb us. We are watching series after series on Netflix, Hollywood, Bollywood, Somaliwood, right? You name it. We don't want them to distract us, so we give them these phones. And they are accessing all types of filth and evil. WW dot. For those who didn't know what WW dot stands for, it stands for the World Wide Web. Deep that for a moment. This is exactly what they have a fingertip away from, right? They click on some of these hashtags and they are exposed to a whole different world. The parent no longer has two, a hus uh, not the husband, 
a, a mom and a dad. They have a third parent. What's the third parent? These gadgets that are nurturing them, that are intellectually challenging them. Right? Now coming on to red pill, I'm only going to need five minutes. Huh? Because everything I mentioned would also apply here as to why an individual now may decide to embrace this movement, right? Is everything that feminism propagates incorrect? Of course not. Is everything that red pill propagates against the Quran and the Sunnah, against our Sharia? Of course not. However, my brothers and my sisters, we are not in need of these movements, and that is simply because Al Islam is so perfect. Muslims are not, but Al Islam is so perfect. It gives everyone their due right. Right? It puts a woman in its place, and likewise, it puts a man in its place. The way Allah has created us and the roles that has been dedicated to both men and women, my brothers and my sisters, it is a complementary type relationship. The roles complement one another. I'm, I'm nearly done. I know what that means, right? Are you guys with me? They are roles that complement one another. Islam is not against women, right? And likewise, it is not against men, right? Or men. So now this red pill movement, if you look at some of the things that it really stands for, it stands for masculinity, a man just being a man. Is there anything wrong with that? Of course not. However, there are other sentiments which focuses a lot on fostering, or should I say, creating a hostile environment for a woman, degrading her and so on and so forth. Of course, this is absolute nonsense. And in Islam, of course, is against that. And to conclude this point, my brothers and my sisters, of red pill, it glorifying men going around, sleeping with women. Sahih? It's okay for a man to sleep with X amount of women, right? That which has absolutely no limit. And this is what masculine, mascul what was the word that I'm looking for? Huh? Masculinates him. Huh? I think that's the word that we're looking for, right? It turns him into a man. But when it comes to a woman, and excuse me for using this term, right? If she has a high body count, then this is not something that is praiseworthy. Let me ask you a question. Why is it okay for men and it's not okay for women? I think this is interesting now. Ah. Sorry? So it's okay for him to countlessly now sleep with women. Huh? It's, it's okay for him, but when it comes to women, it is considered something, right, dispraised. Okay, Afshin, Afshin. Right? This movement now glorifies and venerates a man sleeping around and he's considered masculine. He's considered a man. Someone who's progressive, someone who's doing well, right? Agreed? Isn't this what this movement is all about? But then when it comes to a woman, the higher the body count, the more problematic this is. Huh? Why is it okay for him and it's not okay for women? No. Mm. It's frowned upon. Type. Anyone else? Huh? Feel like men uh, feel a little bit angry at this feminist movement, and they want to take revenge. <laughs> 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 he said. He said. He said. Men are so angry with feminists. Now they're trying to take revenge. Huh? So he goes around chewing them all like a piece of chewing gum and spitting them out. Right? Is that his way of now seeking revenge? Maybe, yeah. Why is it okay for some men, but it's not okay for women? And let me ask you guys another question. What determines what's okay for men 
and what is not okay for women. Society, someone said. Tayyip, let me ask you guys a question. What determines what is morally acceptable and that which is maybe frowned upon? Someone said Quran and Sunnah. Let's put that to the side for a moment, right? We're going to come on to that. Not that I'm saying put the Quran and Sunnah, abadan. No, no, no. Just in case we have one of these guys huh, who's going to run with it and send it to some guys in Rotterdam. Huh? <laughs> we, are, we follow the Quran and the Sunnah, guys. Funny understanding of the Sahaba and the Tabi'een and the Tabi'een. I mean, like, we'll come on to that. What is considered morally acceptable? Once upon a time, my brothers and my sisters, weed was illegal. In just about every American state, now it's being legalized. Even here in the Netherlands, you have the uh, space cake. Sahih? Is that what you guys call it? Space cake. Some may see this to be morally unacceptable, and some say, no, this is fine. Right? Cannibalism. What does the cannibalism mean? Well, you eat human beings. Huh? Is it okay, guys? No, no, this is very important. We have to. And I'm going to come on to it. Right? This is the crux of the matter. Of everything that I talk to you guys about, this is now the conclusion for it. Cannibalism, guys. It's better than the Q&A. We're going to come on to the Q&A. Cannibalism. Is it okay, guys? But why not? Did you know up until this very day that in some places around the world, cannibalism is perfectly fine. To eat another human being is good. Prima. Huh? <laughs> Are you guys with me? Even now, this whole colorful movement. Once upon a time, amongst all of these superpowers, it was something that gets you into prison. Sah? There might even have been a death penalty. In the UK, over 60 years ago, this was something that warrants a death penalty. They would drown him. I'm just quoting again, guys. Abu Taymiyyah does not have anything. But then, as time went on, that which is morally acceptable began to change. Can you see, brothers and sisters, how this changes over time? Sahih? When I speak to atheists, right, I might speak to Bob, and then I speak to Suzanne, and I always walk away confused. Shall I tell you why? Because when I speak to Bob, he tells me that certain things are morally acceptable. I go to Suzanne, she goes, no, he's wrong. This is morally acceptable, and this is unacceptable, and so on and so forth. In this world, my brothers and my sisters, right? Because of subjective morality, how everyone looks at things in their own way, everyone has their own lens, right? There is chaos. Now just look at Russia and Ukraine. Vladimir Putin sees it to be morally acceptable to do whatever he's doing with Ukraine. Sah? But the rest of the world sees it to be maybe what? Unacceptable. Who's right? But then America finds it perfectly fine now to invade this country. Israel does whatever it does with Palestine. Morally acceptable or unacceptable? It's a problematic world, right? This leaves, off, this leaves us, my brothers and my sisters, with no choice except to accept that there is an external entity which is of course Allah the Almighty, a God, that governs us with rules and regulations, telling us what we should do and what we shouldn't do. Otherwise, there'll be chaos. Otherwise, there's nothing stopping from someone saying, it's okay for men now to sleep around and this is now great for them. But then when it comes to a woman, it is unacceptable. Agreed? Right? Who puts these laws down? If it's a man, there's always going to be what? Contradiction. But we have that divine law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We were created for one sole purpose, my brothers and sisters. And I asked you guys this question at the beginning. Why did Allah create you? Did Allah create you now to just go and sleep around with the opposite agenda? Did Allah create you now to compete with men? Did Allah create you, O oh man, to degrade women? Is that why you were created? Allah created وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I did not create jinn and ins, except to worship me alone. We don't need a discovery in 2023 telling us now that 
this is okay and this is bad for you, right? I'll read something out to you guys. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, <laughs> right? I think this is maybe worth reading. You guys heard of bacon? You guys know what bacon is? Huh? You guys know what bacon is? The swine. Huh? I came across this article that was released recently and it was just, it was on just about every news outlet, right, in the UK. This is now from The Independent. It was also on The Daily Mirror and so on and so forth. It said, bacon and alcohol increase stomach cancer risk. A discovery, wow. Who told you 1400 years ago to stay away from bacon and alcohol? None other than the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do we need a discovery in 2023, my brothers and my sisters, in order now for us to accept what Allah and His Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us? Sometimes you hear somebody saying, what does Islam say about this? What does Islam say about that? I'm not talking about a non-Muslim. They have the right to ask that question. But a Muslim says this. But what does Islam, what, you know, what does, as if Islam is a human being. No, ask me, what does God say? What does Allah say? You are a Muslim. Right? The subservient slave that you are of Allah. You don't question what Allah told you to do simply because you have accepted that what Allah sends down is divine. Right? We don't need an article from the Daily Mirror telling us that the majority of British women, right, prefer to be housewives. Allah told you this already. To look after your children. And to bring out the next generation that bi'idhnillahi ta'ala will have a positive impact on society. Simply because if you don't, look where the children will end up. The deen of Allah is so perfect, my brothers and my sisters. This is why it's so important for us to learn. Work on your relationship with Allah. Learn about His names and His attributes. The more you learn about Allah, my brothers and my sisters, Right? The more you will be accepting and submissive to what Allah has to say. You're not going to think thrice, let alone twice, brothers and sisters. Or should I say, you wouldn't even need to think twice, let alone thrice. I'm getting tired now. Are you guys with me? The more you learn about someone, the more you begin to love them, right? Yesterday I gave the example of a brother who's pursuing a sister. Put your hand up if you're engaged. Huh? That brother said he's engaged. Everyone say, Allahumma barik. Don't give him your evil eye. Huh? Allahumma barik. Can I ask you a question? Huh? Adiga. You. Right? You, you, quickly. This sister now that you are pursuing, that you're engaged with, why did you, why, why did you go after her? <laughs> Do you have anything else about her that caused you now to have some sort of inclinement towards her? Hadin is good. Anything else? She beautiful? Yeah, Allahu Akbar. Anyone else? I think that brother over there. I'm nearly done, Yunus. Yeah. Uh. Right, go on. Why are you engaged to Princess Shami? Because he knows, or you know, inshallah, he thinks that she will be a good mother. Good. Tomorrow you will find out that she prays in the night and that she fasts in the day. Let's just say, your potential spouse is someone who wakes up in the night and she's praying to Allah. What would you feel? You'd be happy, right? I hit the jackpot. Sah? That's how you would feel. She's someone who really goes out her way in her acts of worship. Sahih? Or then you've got other good things that you now begin to find out about her. And this is normal, my brothers and my sisters. The more you find out about someone, the more you learn about their good traits and qualities, the more you begin to what? Love them. Not that I'm trying to compare Princess Charming to Allah. No. Our only source of knowledge that we have of Allah is His names and attributes. The more you learn about Him, Wallahi brothers, it's impossible for you not to have that connection with Allah. Impossible. People always say, I don't feel that connection with God. When I pray, there's no sweetness. Simply because you don't know anything about Allah. What are you praying to? Right? You just don't have the information. Learn your religion, my brothers and my sisters. Rectify this aqidah, especially in today's day and age. And this is what's going to protect you 
from fitna to shubuhat and fitna to shahwat. Right? May Allah bless you all. Jazakum Allah khairan wa ahsan Allahu ilaykum. Honestly, it's an absolute pleasure. Eindhoven, thank you for selling out. Jazakum Allah khair. Barakallah fi. Just uh, in case this gets taken out of context, right? I never said, did I say that women can't work? I didn't say that. As long as, of course, she meets the Islamic guidelines and whatever have you, that's absolutely fine. And of course, she's not being negligent with regards to her responsibilities as a mother. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And of course, the rights of her husband and so on and so forth. Allahu Alam.